So far, we've been largely ignoring the templates, and let's go ahead and deep dive into those. So first thing I'm gonna do is hit new. Normally, I either use this one or I've already got it queued up and ready to go. So we're gonna start exploring these templates down here, namely the scroll, stack, and swipe. We're gonna take the cute, quick application scroll, and I'm gonna slow way, way down just so you can see I'm not making any changes. Gonna give it a name, default build system, minimal version, language, the kit. We're going to use the same kit that we've been using. As long as it says desktop and cute, it's largely unimportant what the version and desktop platform and compiler and all that is, just desktop and cute. No project management, and voila. So looking at this, it's pretty self-explanatory what's going on. We have an application window. We have a scroll view, which is just going to simply scroll the contents, which in this case is a list view. The list view itself is going to have a model with 20 items, and each item is going to be displayed as item plus whatever the number is. Let's go ahead and save and run. So here's our application. We can scroll, and there's our 20 items. Pretty self-explanatory, but I'm going to show you how to modify this. So let's close that. First thing we want to do is actually make our own model. So we're going to say list model. And I'm going to call this ID of model. Pretty self-explanatory. Try to keep things super simple. And this first element I'm going to key in manually. I'm going to say list element. And we'll say name. So really we're defining, if you will, a miniature model of data. I say miniature because these can get massive. Um, essentially a small database is what we're making. Any of you uh, real database experts out there are going to go, this is not a database. You're absolutely right. I'm just trying to get people who are not familiar with databases to understand what's going on. So anyways, our first element is going to have a name, and let's have a phone number out there. More appropriately, this would be a data set. So, and let's add a number. Let's call this 555. Uh, I'm just going to say 5431. Now that we've got our model, we can plug that in. So we're going to say use this model. Now we want to change this delegate. The delegate's going to determine how each element's going to be displayed. So let's go ahead, go in here, and I'm going to make a component. You may be going, whoa, 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 what's a component? Well, it's a little bit challenging to explain. Um, even the documentation doesn't really help you too much, but basically a component encapsulates all the QML component definition. Huh? Isn't that the same thing as an item? Not really. So an item is a non-visual element. We've talked about the item before, and we're just going to make one now. And let's call this item. Very super descriptive. So you can see I've got the item inside of the component. So you could actually have, say, multiple items in here if you wanted to, or rectangles or buttons or whatever but the component encapsulates the entire definition of your component. It's a very kind of vague term. So when do you use one over the other? Honestly, in my experience, it really doesn't matter. Um, typically, I'll use component when I want to encapsulate some sort of functionality here. All right, so very basics. What we're going to do here is we're going to say the width. I want this to be 200. Height, let's say 50. And let's go ahead and put a column in here, because remember, the delegate's going to determine how this is displayed. And we want anchors. We're going to go ahead and fill the parent. Spacing 5. Now, in this case, the parent is kind of hidden from us. The parent's going to be the actual list element. And it's not even the list element. It's the list item inside the delegate. So the delegate's going to say, hey, create a delegate slam that list element into the list item, and it all happens in the background for us. So we've got to take our model, who has a name and a number, and make it visible somehow. So we need a few labels. So we're going to say label, let's say text, and I want to put the name in there. Notice IntelliSense is not figuring out what we're trying to do. And I'm going to say font, bold, true. And through the magic of copy and paste, I can just grab this. And we need to be able to put the number in here. So basically, we're going to take 
this list element. We need a name and a number, name, number. As long as those line up, you're good. Now let's change this to delegate. Doesn't really matter what we name that, as long as we can take it in here and put it right there. Oops, delegate, there we go. So our model is lining up with our model. Our delegate is lining up with our delegate. And when we save and run, what it's gonna do is gonna load this model and it's gonna say for each list element, create a delegate and display it. Let's see what that looks like. So there's Bill Smith. Now I'm going to save a lot of typing. I'm just gonna grab a bunch of these off the screen. I've already got them pre-written up and ready to go. And I'm just gonna make a larger list model. Save and run, and voila. What's up everybody, this is Brian. I hope you enjoyed this video. It's part of a larger series out on udemy.com called QML for Beginners. The QML for Beginners course assumes you know absolutely zero QML. You're just starting off and it's designed specifically for Qt5. I will re-record the entire series when Qt6 comes out and just know that it's over 100 videos and 13 and a half hours of video on demand. I'll put a link below so you can get a highly discounted rate. And before you dive in, just understand it covers a lot more than what I can put into this list. Everything from what's QML to animations to C++, integration, JavaScript, and on and on and on. But one of the requirements up front is you have to know Qt Core. You should have some C++ under your belt and be very familiar with Qt 5. In case you have none of that, I do have some courses for Qt Core beginners, intermediate and advanced out on Udemy as well. Hope to see you there.